احمد سورا امبیا اٹ از اسورا وچ واز ریویلڈ ان مکا اٹ ہیز سیون اسٹینز اینڈ ون ہنڈریڈ اینڈ ٹویلو ورسز ٹوینٹی فرسٹ بائی دا آڈر آف ارینجمنٹ اینڈ سیونٹی تھرڈ بائی دا آڈر آف ریولیوشن دا نیم آف دا سورا ڈیرائیوز فرام دا فیکٹ دیٹ ان دا چیپٹر اللہ سبحان و تعالی ہیز نریٹیڈ دا ایونٹس ان دا لائف آف فیو پروفٹس اینڈ دا ٹائم پیریڈ آف دا ریولیوشن از دا مڈل پیریڈ آف دا اسٹے ان مکا دا بیسک ٹاپکس آف دا سورا بینگ دا انویٹیشن ٹوورڈز بلیف ان دا وننس آف اللہ بلیف ان دا prophethood of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and belief and fear of hereafter the basic concept uh, which we are going to discuss and learn from the sura is that this world is a period of trial and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts his bondsmen to trial in various manners like by blessing them and showering his bounties on them the second is by depriving them and or by taking away his blessings from them and last but not the least showering blessings after being deprived and then uh, explaining and narrating the events in the life of the prophets the manner with which they behaved in different trials will teach us the adopted the, the manner we need to adopt in various trials of life also bismillahir rahmanir rahim The time of their account has approached for the people while they are in heedlessness turning away. No mention comes to them anew from their Lord except that they listen to it while they are at play. With their hearts distracted, those who wrong conceal their private conversations saying, is this prophet except a human being like you? So would you approach magic while you are aware of it? Throughout in the chapter, we will go through verses where uh, the people of uh, the period of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were putting allegations on him. they would call him a poet labeling quran which he was presenting as a poetry they would call him a magician a spell caster sometimes nausubilla calling him what a person who was mentally insane then they used to mock him and ask question that why was he human how could he be a prophet if he was a human why wasn't he given or uh, an accompanying angel with him why wasn't he blessed with wealth or treasures and why wasn't he a tribal leader? leader if he had happened to be a prophet so there had been different allegations and uh, mockings by the people of Quraysh which are mentioned in the surah the prophet said my lord knows whatever is said through whatever is said throughout the heaven and the earth and he is the hearing and the knowing but they say the revelation is but a mixture of false dreams rather he has invented it rather he is a poet so let him bring us a sign just as the previous messengers were sent with miracles not a single city which we destroyed believe before them so they will so will they believe and we sent not before you except men to whom we revealed the messages so ask the people of messages if you do not know and we did not make the prophets form uh, prophets forms not eating food nor they were immortal on earth then we fulfilled for them the promise and we saved them and whom we willed and destroyed the transgressors we have certainly sent down to you a book in which is your mention then will you not reason and how many a city which was unjust have we shattered and produced after it another people and when its inhabitants perceived our punishment at once they fled from it some angels said do not flee but return to where you were given luxury and your homes perhaps you will be questioned they say they said oh woe to us indeed we were wrong doers and that declaration of theirs did not cease until we made them as a harvest mowed down extinguished like a fire 
and we did not create the heaven and the earth and that between them in a play. Had we intended to take a diversion, we could have taken it from what is with us if indeed we were to do so. Rather, we dash the truth upon falsehood and it destroys it and thereupon it departs. And for you is destruction from what? From that which you describe. To him belongs whoever is in the heavens and the earth and those near him are not prevented by arrogance from his worship, nor do they tire. They exalt him night and day. What is this? Who, who is this Allah mentioning? The angels. They exalt him night and day and do not slacken or have men taken for themselves gods from the earth who resurrected the death. Had there been within the heavens and the earth gods besides Allah, they both would have been ruined. So exalted is Allah, the Lord of the throne, about what they describe. He is not questioned about what he does, but they will be questioned. Or have they taken gods besides him? Say, produce your proof. This Quran is the message for those with me and the message for those before me. But most of them do not know the truth. So they are turning away. And we sent not before you any messenger except that we revealed to him that there is no deity except me, so worship me. And they say, the most merciful has taken a son. Exalted is he, rather they are but honored servants. They cannot precede him in word and they act by his command. And he knows what is presently before them and what will be after them and they cannot intercede except on behalf of one whom he approves and they from fear of him are apprehensive and whoever of them should say indeed I am God besides him that one he, we would recompense with hell thus do we recompense the wrongdoers have those who disbelieve not considered that the heavens and the earth were joined in uh, were a joint entity and we separated them and made from them and made from water everything and uh, every living thing then will they not believe and be placed within the earth firmly set mountains lest it should shift with them and we made therein mountain passes as roads that they might be guided and we made the sky a protected ceiling but they from its signs are turning away and it is he who created the night and the day and the sun and the moon all heavenly bodies in an orbit are swimming and we did not grant to any man before you eternity on earth. So if you die, would they be eternal? Every soul will taste death. Allahumma a'ini ala humaratil maut wa saqaratil maut. And we test you with evil and with good as a trial. And to us, you will be returned. And when those who disbelieve see you, they take you not except in ridicule, saying, is this the one who insults your goals? And they are at the mention of the most merciful disbelievers. Man was created of haste. I will show you my signs. So do not, <clears throat> so do not impatiently urge me. And they say, when is this promise if you should be truthful? If those who disbelieved but knew the time when they will not avert the fire from their faces or from their backs and they will not be aided. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Rather, it will come to them unexpectedly and bewilder them and they will not be able to repel it, nor will they be reprieved. And already were messengers ridiculed before you, but those who mocked them were enveloped by what they used to ridicule. Say, who can protect you at night or by day from the most merciful, but they are from the remembrance of their law turning away. Or do they have gods to defend them other than us? They are unable even to help themselves, nor can they be protected from us. 
But on the contrary, we have provided good things for these disbelievers and their fathers until life was prolonged for them. Then do they not see that we set upon the land, reducing it from its borders? So it is they who will overcome. Say, I only warn you by revelation, but the deaf do not hear the call when they are warned. And if as much as a whiff of the punishment of your lords should touch them, they would surely say, oh, woe to us. Indeed, we have been wrongdoers. And we place the scales. We place the scales of justice for the day of resurrection. So no soul will be treated unjustly at all. And if there is even the weight of a mustard seed, we will bring it forth. And sufficient are we as an accountant. And we had already given Musa salam, and Harun salam, the criteria and a light and a reminder for the righteous who fear their Lord unseen while they are of the hour apprehensive. And this Quran is a blessed message which we have sent down. And then are you with it unacquainted? Verse number 51. And we had certainly given Ibrahim salam his sound judgment before, and we were of him well known, well knowing. When he said to his father and his people, what are these statues to which you are devoted? So we learn from here the conditions which uh, Hazrat Ibrahim salam, was exposed to when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with the awareness of the attributes of Allah and the belief in the oneness of Allah. He did not keep it to himself. Instead, he introduced and he invited all those around him. So here he is asking his father and his people why they had devoted themselves to the worship of the idols. Verse number 53, they said, we found our fathers worshippers of them. So they came out with a reason and a logic that they had just blindly followed their ancestors. He said, you were certainly, you and your fathers, in a manifest error. They said, have you come to us with truth or you of those who jest? He said, no, rather your Lord is the Lord of heavens and the earth who created them. And I to that am of those who testify. Verse 57, and I swear by Allah, I will surely plan against your idols after you have turned and gone away. So we learn how did he do that? So he made them into fragments, except a large one among them, that they might return to it and question. Now, what happened was that despite such a logical invitation to all the people and his father, the people failed to believe. Hazrat Isa alayhi salam was disgusted. He was simply disgusted at their response. And then he decided to demolish all the idols and the statues. So when the people of the city, they had gone out for a festival and they had left the city, he silently entered the temple, the temple where they had their idols and the statues. And uh, initially, we will learn from some other chapters, he tried to converse with them. But obviously, very obviously, they did not give any response. So he was simply outraged. And then he started breaking all the idols. And completing his task, he put the axe on the shoulder of the biggest idol. Verse 59, they said, who has done this to our gods? Indeed, he is of the wrongdoers. They said, we heard a young man mention them who is called Ibrahim. They said, then bring him before the eyes of the people that they may testify. They said, have you done this to our gods, O Ibrahim? He said, rather this, the largest of them did it. So ask them if they should be able to speak. So they returned to blaming themselves and said to each other, indeed, you are the wrongdoers. Then they reversed themselves saying, you, you have already known that these do not speak. He said, then do you worship instead of Allah, that which does not benefit you at all or harm you? 
off to you and to what you worship instead of Allah, then will you not use reason? So here he, uh, they were all shocked to see the condition of their idols when they returned and they started investigating who had done all this. <coughs> And when Hazrat Ibrahim salam, was called, he tried to make them realize how foolish they were being. The foolishness of their behavior tried to motivate them to think rationally and logically and to just leave uh, worshiping all these idols and to have faith in the oneness of Allah. What did they say? They said, burn him and support your laws if, you're, if you were to act. Allahu Akbar. They were all agitated by Hazrat Ibrahim's behavior and they decided to burn him to death. And why did they do this? They did this for they, it seemed that this was the only, only solution to save and to help their gods. But they, they had lost their rationality and their sense. Did, did this, this simply didn't realize what sort of gods were they that who required the support of their bondsmen for their protection? And then they decided to light up a huge fire and then throw Hazrat Ibrahim salam in it. And everyone considered it as a religious duty and as a noble deed. And they all started the collecting for the fire. And you know what? Even his near and dear ones took part. How painful how painful it must have been, how it must have hurt him, how scary the whole plan was. But Hazrat Ibrahim salam, was what? He was patient, he was steadfast, and he totally relied on Allah. All the animals, they made effort to blow off the fire. Even a small sparrow brought a few drops of water to play her role. And then they placed him in a large catapult to be thrown in the fire. And at that time, Hazrat Jibreel came over to him and inquired if he wanted that the locality should be punished and they should be destroyed. But then Hazrat Ibrahim salam, asked Hazrat Jibreel, do let me know if my, if my Lord is watching, if my Lord is seeing all this. Hazrat Jibreel salam, returned to Allah and then came back to Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, and he told that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that, oh Ibrahim, you are in our sight. And then Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, in complete reliance said, Jibrail, then you just stay away from between me and my, my Lord. This is belief. This is faith and this is reliance and recognition of the powers of Allah. So immense was the sacrifice, so remarkable was the patience, so exemplary was the steadfastness that the help of Allah came as a miracle. When they said, burn him and support your gods if you were to act, what did Allah say? Verse 69, Allah said, Ya naru kuni baradan wasalaman ala Ibrahim. Allah said, O fire, be coolness and safety upon Ibrahim. The fire was ordered to cool down for Hazrat Ibrahim salam, for whom? For the person who was the friend of Allah. And who was the friend of Allah? Who was obedient to Allah, who was steadfast in his obedience, who was patient and who relied on Allah. What happened then? And they intended for him harm, but we made for them the for we made them the greatest losers. The worst of enemy intends, but the worst of enemy can't harm. That is what we learn because what happens is what Allah wills. So that is why Allah says, Don't fear them, fear me. Remember, however powerful, however great, however bitter an enemy be, will not be able to harm until and unless Allah Almighty wills. When Hazrat Ibrahim stuck up so boldly, so courageously for the invitations of the oneness of Allah and eradication of polytheism, presenting everything for his sacrifice, 
for the cause of Allah, what did Allah reward him with? And what did he receive? Allah says, and we delivered him and Luth to the land which we had blessed for the worlds. And we gave him Ishaq and Yaqub in addition. And all of them we made righteous and we made them leaders guiding by our command. And we inspired to them the doing of good deeds, establishment of prayer and giving of zakah. And they were worshippers of us. And to Lut, we gave judgment and knowledge and we saved him from the city that was committing wicked deeds. Indeed, they were people of evil, defiantly disobedient. And we admitted him in our mercy indeed he was of the righteous and mention knew when he called to Allah before that time so we responded to him and saved him and his family from the great flood and we saved him from the people who denied our signs indeed they were a people of evil so we drowned them all together verse 78 and mention Daud alayhi salam and Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salam, when they judged concerning the fields, when the sheep of the people overran it at night, and we were witness to their judgment. And we gave understanding of the case to Hazrat Sulaiman, and to each of them we gave judgment and knowledge, and we subjected the mountains to exalt us along with Dawud alayhi salam, and also the birds, and we were doing that. And we taught him the fashioning of coats of armor to protect you from your enemy in a battle, and so that you will be grateful. And to Sulaiman, we subjected the winds, blowing forcibly proceeding by his commands towards the land which we had blessed and we are ever of all things knowing so in these verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about how he had blessed the father Hazrat Dawud alayhi salam and the son Hazrat Suleiman alayhi salam he had blessed them with plenty of his blessings but they were both grateful to Allah and being grateful to Allah, as we've talked earlier also, does not only mean being grateful by word of mouth, but being grateful by what? By one's behavior and by one's deeds also. By one's activities also, we need to show our gratitude. Grateful behavior means what? That the person should use the blessings of Allah according to the orders and limits set by Allah and also in the path of Allah. So, Hazrat Dawood and Hazrat Sulaiman salam, they used the blessings of Allah to serve humanity, to help and support all those around them. For example, like Allah has mentioned this verse number 78 and 79, that um, Allah had blessed them with comprehension. Allah, has, Allah had blessed them with comprehension and wisdom to make fair decisions. So the verse narrates, uh, that, that there was an issue which was brought for settlement to Hazrat Dawud And the issue was that a person's goats had entered his neighbor's fields and had ruined all the fields. And uh, Hazrat Dawud he had given the verdict and he gave the decision that the person whose goats had spoiled the crops should be taken. All the goats should be taken and given to the person whose crops had been spoiled to compensate for the loss and to punish the man who had not been mindful and vigilant regarding his, uh, regarding his goats. So they were not really satisfied with the decision and the case was then taken to Hazrat Suleiman salam, who with his greater wisdom, he came up with an even balanced, even more balanced and a fair decision. His verdict was that the goats should be handed over to the farmer till the master of the goats works up at the farm and the fields to grow up the crops. And when the crops, they will reach the state in which the field was spoiled, then his goats, they will be returned back. So this was an even fairer and more just and a balanced decision. But the person uh, the lesson we learn is that all the capabilities and positions we have are the blessings of the merciful Allah. So to express our gratitude, we need to use them for the service of his bondsmen in the path of Allah and according to the limits of Allah. 
and of the devils were those who had died for him and did work other than that, and we were of them a guardian. Verse number 83, and mention, and mention the story of whom Hazrat Ayyub alayhi salam, when he called to his Lord, and he said, what? Indeed, adversity has touched me, and you are most merciful of the merciful. So we responded to him and removed what afflicted him of adversity, and we gave him back his family and the like thereof with them as mercy from us and a reminder for the worshippers of Allah. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning about Hazrat Ayyub alayhi salam. He was a prophet sent to the people of Bani Israel and uh, most probably during the 19th, 9th century. And uh, some of uh, the people say that he was in a period before, uh, before Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And according to some, he was a contemporary of Hazrat Dawood alayhi salam and Hazrat Suleiman alayhi salam, but obviously they're different opinions. He has been mentioned in the verses of the New Testament also, and it is reported that he belonged to a family of Esu, who were the sons of Hazrat Ishaq alayhi salam. The area in which he was sent to is usually explained as Egypt, and some also consider that it, uh, he was sent to people of Arabia. And uh, his, uh, he has been mentioned in Surah Nisa and Surah An'am also. And uh, his story has been explained in, uh, in the Quran and also by the traditions of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in fact, his story is a story of gratitude, of patience, and of remembrance of Allah. Hazrat Adi bin Hatim radiallahu ta'ala and who has reported how Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has narrated, and I shall be narrating the whole events in my words indirectly also. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he was like one of the wealthiest men in the East. And uh, he had been blessed by various farms and he had a flourishing trade and he had been blessed with fertile lands and huge amount of immense amount of agricultural fields making him rich and wealthy. And he had plenty of cattle also, and he had a huge family. So despite being so blessed, he was not one of those who had just uh, stayed busy and involved in his worldly affairs and uh, just busy looking after and maintaining his possessions and properties. Instead, he used to spend long hours worshiping his merciful Rab. And uh, people around you, uh, around um, Hazrat Ayyub alayhi salam, used to comment that if Hazrat Ayyub alayhi salam spends time in worship, he very much can because he is free and he has all the time and energy in the world. And we have to spend our time and energy for earning our livelihood so we can worship Allah to that extent. Actually, this was not the case. So to prove to these people and also to put Hazrat Ayyub alayhi salam into trial, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took back all his blessings one after the other. His land became barren and infertile, and there was no yield. He suffered heavy losses in his trade, and all the cattle died. Many of his family members also passed away. So there he was, left deprived by Allah. And this again was a trial. Being blessed was a trial, and taking back the blessings after being blessed was a trial. He was left deprived all by himself, solitary soul, and then finally, the only thing left was his health, was also taken away. He fell sick with boils, with pustules, with blisters all over his body and all full of pus and fluid oozing out. What a situation. All deprived, solitude, no one around him to console him, to feed him, to take care of. And even in this pathetic situation, has the Yubal Salam was still worshipping Allah and still remembering and still grateful and patient. 
He said, Oh Allah, you know that when I had plenty of blessings, I used to stand for your worship for long hours, leaving my bed, my soft and cozy bed at night, telling myself that I had not been sent down for these luxuries. But now, when I, but then, but then I had all those things, I was busy and my mind was preoccupied and I was committed to all those things. But now you have taken back all these things from me and now I am all free without any involvement, without any commitment. And now there is nothing intervening between you and me. I am totally free for you. Oh Allah, if shaitan realizes how you have blessed me in this deprived state, he will envy me. Oh Allah, protect me from the enmities and from the attacks of shaitan. Subhanallah. This is called gratitude. This is how we need to remember Allah. And this is what patience is. And then the, in this agony and in this misery of his illness, he remembered Allah. And he supplicated to his merciful Ashafi Rabb. And he supplicated asking for help. And how beautifully he supplicated by just saying, Rabbi Anni Masani Azuru wa Anta Arhamur Rahimin. What a beautiful style of supplication. Hazrat Ayyub salam, when making dua for his recovery, he just explains to Allah his state and his adversity. And that's all, nothing more. Because he believed in the attributes of Allah. He knew that he is all seeing, all hearing, all knowing, all wise and all loving. The most merciful and the most loving. So he just knew he need not elaborate on what he needs. He did not elaborate on what he wanted or what he desired because Allah knows who's closer than our jugular vein. So remember to recite this dua when sick, when ailing. It is a supplication which was heard, which reached the throne of Allah, which was accepted and which was granted. And now in this verse 84, when Allah says that Allah responded to him and was removed what he was afflicted with, what did he do? Allah said, Fastajabna lahu. And that what happened? Fakashafna. Allah removed all the adversities which had been afflicted. And then he was blessed all over again. How did this happen? In Bukhari, it has been reported that Hazrat Ayub salam was taking bath and he was in his courtyard and a cloud came above his house and it started pouring a rain of golden butterflies and Hazrat Ayub salam started collecting them. And it was asked, is this greed? Is this lust of wealth? And he answered, no, Allah, I am gathering this out of love of your blessings and mercy. The lesson is to stay content, peaceful, grateful, patient in all the conditions, in all the states, all the ages, always, everywhere, every time to be content with the decisions of Allah and to be obedient and mindful of the worships of Allah in all the conditions, in all the situations. Rabbi Aini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Verse 85 and mention Ismail and Idris and Zilkifl all were of the patient. Patience, an essential trait of all the prophets of Allah. And the reward of patience is what? We admitted them into our mercy. Indeed, they were of the righteous. Allahumma ja'alni saburam wa ja'alni shakura. Verse 87, and mentioned the man of the fish when he went off in anger and thought that we would not decree anything upon them. And he called out within the darkness, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu mina zwalimeen. There's no deity except you. Exalted are you. Indeed, I have been of the wrong tours. So we responded to him and saved him from the distress. And do we save the believers? So now here is the narration of whom 
Zanun, the man of the fish. His name has been mentioned in the Quran, in the verses of the Quran, where we learn in um, Surah Yunus, in Surah Suafat, and here in Surah Anbiya also. And he has been called as Zunun, he has been called as Sahibul Hud, and also by his name, Yunus alayhi salam. His period was uh, 784 to 760 BC. That is before Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. And his land was, he has been known as Yunus ibn Mata. And uh, he was uh, sent to the people of the city of Nenwa. And Nenwa was a city in the northern Iraq. And the remnants of the city still exist on the eastern bank of Tigris. And uh, the current area is the city of Mosul. And there is a place which is known as the station of Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam in the city of, Mun uh, in the city of Mosul. Now, this uh, city of Nenva had a population of hundreds of thousands of people, and they were all they were all indulging in worshiping idols, and the city was filled with idols. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in this city, which was booming with idol worship, he he chose among the people from. Uh, Nenva. He was born and bred in Nenva. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Hazrat uh, Yunus al-Islam from among them to uh, spread the light of Islam in the city. And uh, he immediately set upon to fulfill the, uh, the orders and the invitations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the people of Nenva rejected all what he was inviting them to. Initially, he was not deterred and he kept on calling them and kept on reminding them of the terrible wrath of Allah that was directed towards the Ad and the Samud and the people of Nu. But they still kept on rejecting them. And they would say that we and our forefathers, they worship these gods so for many years and no harm has come to them. Uh, it says come to them or come to us also. So you go ahead and let it happen, whatever you scare us off. And finally, Hazrat Yunus Salaam was disheartened and he gave up his people. And uh, what he did humanly wrong was that without waiting for the permission of Allah or for the order of Allah for immigration, he decided to leave the city of Nenva in hope of finding a community further away who would or who might accept the invitation. So he left the people of Nanva and uh, before the order of Allah. What happened to the people of Nanva after him was that uh, there was the, the calm skies over the city. They turned into red clouds and they were showing the anger of Allah. And the clouds showed as if the, they, they were going to spit the wrath of Allah. And the men and the women, they all remembered Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam's warnings of Allah's punishment. And they feared the, punish of, uh, the wrath of Allah. So the women and the children and the men folk, they all gathered at the mountain tops and they kneeled down. They fell down on their knees and they were all crying and they were all, they all raised their hands and they were supplicating and they were seeking forgiveness. And the children and the women were also crying and seeking forgiveness. And then Allah was touched. Allah was touched with this, scene, uh, this sincere repentance and then Allah lift his, lifted his punishment and forgave all these people and showered his blessings upon them and the skies cleared off and then the people prayed for the safe return of their beloved prophet Yunus alayhi salam and so that he could come back and they could he could guide them to the, uh, to the right path and the path of Allah. And in the meantime, what happened to Hazrat Yunus Islam was that when he left Nainwa, he boarded a passenger ship. And the intention was of uh, traveling far away from his people so that he would get to a locality or a community who might accept the, uh, the teachings of Allah. Now, during the day, the ship traveled calmly in the waters. But when the night closed in, there was a storm and the ship started rocking wildly to and fro. The crew and the passengers began to fear 
for their lives. And uh, the seawater, it gradually began, began flooding into the deck and the ship started sinking out of the weight of water. So the captain initially uh, ordered all of the men to throw away their luggage and their excess load so as to uh, decrease the burden on the ship. So they all threw away all the luggages and all the things they had, but the ship continued to sink because it was still too heavy. So the last resort the captain had was to throw a person out of the ship, to sacrifice the life of one man, to save the life of the crew. So according to the custom, the captain decided to draw lots to choose who out of the passengers will be thrown to save the rest of the crew. And the lots were cast and Prophet Eunice's name came and the men knew that he was young and he was righteous and honest and blessed. So they refused to throw him out. And the, it was agreed to draw the lots again. So the lots were casted again and again his name appeared. The men refused to throw him and they said, that we're not going to get rid of him because he is our blessing on the board and he is the best man we have on the board and we're not going to get rid of him. So the drew the lots again for the third time and again his name came. So and now Hazrat Yunus knew that this was the verdict of Allah. And uh, he himself, he jumped out of the ship in the dark night, in the angry ocean, middle of the night, and then with Allah's command, the largest whale in the ocean came up and swallowed Yunus alayhi salam, just as he hit the water. And there he lay unconscious. And when he awoke, he found himself enveloped by sheer darkness. Initially, he thought that he was in his grave. But then when he remembered everything, he, he woke, he realized that he was not in his grave, but he was in the stomach of that large whale fish which swallowed it. And deep down, deep down in the darkness of the ocean and in the water, in the stomach of the whale, Hazrat Yunus salam, prostrated to Allah. And then he recited this verse, that I'm prostrating to you in a place where no one has prostrated to you before in the stomach of the wish. And he called out, reciting these verses, and none has the right to be worshipped by you, glorified is you. Truly, I have been among the wrongdoers. Because this was what he, when he realized that he had been, he had done indecent haste in proceeding before waiting for the orders of Allah, he realized that he had done a folly and he had done something wrong. So he accepted, he confessed, he regretted, he seeked forgiveness, and then he was forgiven. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he cried out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking forgiveness of what he had happened, what he had done. And we all know, in Allah loves those who seek forgiveness. And we also know that Prophet sallallahu has told us that who makes it a routine to seek forgiveness. Any person who makes it a routine to seek forgiveness, Allah does what? Allah blesses him with contentment of his soul. Number two, Allah eases him out of his misery and adversities. And number three, Allah provides him sustenance from where he can't even imagine. And now we will learn that what happened to Hazrat Yunus salam, was actually a narration of this hadith. It was an explanation, provides an explanation of the words of Prophet sallallahu so exactly the same happened when Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam, he realized that he had disobeyed in haste and he confessed and he asked for forgiveness. Then what happened? Deep down in the ocean, inside the fish, darkness, water, solitude, despair, no hope of survival, he stayed peace. He stayed peace and he got calmness. Why? Allah bi zikrillahi tatma'innul qulub. It was the wonder of remembrance of Allah. And it was the miracle of seeking forgiveness that he stayed peaceful and he stayed calm. Then the second part of the hadith, Allah eased him out of the hardship. Did it seem possible? Did it seem possible that he'll be able to come out of the whale where he was? Has it ever happened? 
it seemed like next to impossible, but it became possible as Allah, because of seeking forgiveness of Hazrat, of Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the veil and it, it swam up to the, to the shore and ejected and threw out, threw out Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam on the seashore. This was the result of what? Seeking forgiveness, easing out the crises. And then the third part of the hadith that Allah will provide for him sustenance from where he will not even imagine. Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam was all by himself, extremely weak, all his skin debrided because of the acid in the stomach of the fish. But help and sustenance of Allah was extended to him for whom? Who had asked for forgiveness he lay on the seashore and a broad-leaved creeper on which the pumpkins grew it had broad leaves it grew and provided him shade moreover we also know that leaves of the pumpkin creeper also act as a repellent for the flies and the insect and this would do what this would prevent infection and aid in healing of all the wounds has it um, Yunus al Islam had, and what else? By the order, by the order of the merciful sustainer, who no doubt is all forgiving. A she deer used to come, a she deer used to come morning and evening and used to feed him milk. Subhanallah. Remember, Allah never leaves his bondsmen. Trials come, but they are surely temporary. During the trial, Allah sees, hears, knows all the behavior of the person in trial. During a trial, one who stays steadfast in obedience, is patience, relies, and returns to Allah, asking for forgiveness, supplicating towards his Lord, then Allah loves those who repent, seek forgiveness, supplicate, remember him in all conditions. And we learn that to err is to is human. To err is human. But as Prophet وسلم, has said, Kullu bani adama khattan, khayrul that all human beings will err, but the best of those who err are those who seek forgiveness. That is why Allah says, Ya Yuhallazina Amanu Tubu illallahi jamiya la allakum tufrihun. Oh, you people, oh, you believer, repent towards Allah so that you may succeed. And Allah warns, Wamallam yatub fa ulai kahumuzwalimun. Those who do not repent and those who do not seek forgiveness, they are the wrongdoers. Some people, rather than learning all these morals from the story of Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam, they start doing what? They try to mimic the exact behavior of Hazrat Yunus al-Islam in their periods of crises. Things like arranging a gathering and reciting the words of Hazrat Yunus al-Islam like 10 million times. And some people also do what? Mimic to the finest details. They they in a dark room and um, in, uh, they start reciting on a string, string of bees placed in a bowl of water Seemingly trying to do what? Trying to simulate the conditions. No, this is not what is needed. It is not what is needed. We don't need counting or repetition of the recital of the verses, which has been copied instead. The behavior, the behavior of Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam, the behavior of identification of the sin, of confession of the sin, regret, seeking of forgiveness with intention, and dua of refraining from the sin is what is needed. Allahumma ja'alni min at-tawwabina wa ja'alni min al-mutatakhirin. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zwalimin. Rabbi aghfir warham wa anta khayru rahimin. Astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu alayk. Allahumma inna ka afuvan kareemun tuhibbu al-affa. Fa'fu anna, fa'fu anna, fa'fu anna. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Allahumma khfirli. Allahumma khfirli. Allahumma khfir lana walil mu'minina wal mu'minat. Wal muslimina wal muslimat. Verse 89. And mention 
and mention Hazrat Zakaria when he called to his Lord, my Lord, do not leave me alone with no heirs while you are the best of inheritors. A beautiful supplication when we want offsprings and heirs. Verse 90, so we responded to him and we gave to him whom Hazrat Yahya salam, and amended for him his wife. Indeed, they used to hasten good deeds and supplicate us in hope and fear and they were to us humbly submissive. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the good traits and manners of Hazrat Zakaria alayhi salam that they used to supplicate and why was their supplication heard? Because they used to do good deeds, they used to fear Allah and they used to hasten in the obedience of Allah and mention the one who guarded her chastity. Who is this? Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam. So we blew into her garment through our angel Jibra'il and we made her and her son, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, a sign for the worlds. Indeed, this your religion is one religion and I am your Lord, so worship me. And yet they divided their affairs among themselves, but all to us will return. So whoever does righteous deeds, while he is a believer, no denial will there be for his effort. And indeed we of it are recorders. And there is prohibition upon the people of a city which we have destroyed that they will ever return until when the dam of uh, when the dam of Yajuj and Majuj has been opened and they from every elevation descended. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has again uh, mentioned about the Yajuj and Majuj who will come when they will come before the, uh, the signs of resurrection have ended. And when the true promise has approached, then suddenly the eyes of those who disbelieved will be staring in horror while they say, oh, woe to us. He, we had been unmindful of this. Rather, we were drawn to us. Indeed, you disbelievers and what you worship other than Allah are the firewood of hell. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. You will be coming to enter it. Had these false deities been actual gods, they would have come to it but all are eternal therein but for them there is heavy sighing and they therein will not hear indeed those for whom the blessed reward has proceeded from us they are from it far removed and they will not hear its sound they, while they are in that which their souls desires abiding eternally they will not be grieved by the greatest terror and the angels will meet them saying this is your day which you have been promised the day when we will fold the heaven like the folding of a written sheet for the records and we began the first creation we will repeat it that is a promise of binding upon us indeed we will do it and we have already written in the book of Zabur after the previous mentions that the land of paradise in, is inherited by my righteous servants. Allahumma ja'alla minhum rabbibni li'aindaka baytan fil jannah. Indeed, in this Quran is notification for worshipping people. And we have not sent you except as a mercy to the worlds say it is not revealed to me that your god is but what god so will so will you be muslims in submission to him but if they turn away then say i have announced to all of you equally and i know not whether near or far is that which you are promised indeed he knows what is declared of speech and he knows what you can what you conceal and i know not perhaps it is a trial for you an enjoyment for a time the prophet has said, my Lord, judge between us in truth. Our Lord is the most merciful, the one whose help is sought against that which you describe. Rabbi la tazarni fardan wa anta khairul warisin, fatir wa samawati wal earth. Anta waliyi fi dunya wal akhira. Tawafani musliman wa alhiqni biswalihin. Rabbana la tuzi.